दोनों जब तो भाइयाना आ दोनों जब तो भाइया नागे माहे सा मैया जखनी पारे ला आई रे पर सलावा न जखनी हो For thousands of years in rural India, the Hindu caste system has operated much like apartheid. Originally based on occupation, the Brahmin or priestly class is at the top of the caste ladder. Not even on the bottom rung are the untouchables, who do the lowliest and dirtiest work. This oppressive social system dictates that the castes live apart. Untouchables can't even share a meal with the higher castes and are forced to have separate wells like this for fear of polluting the water of the higher castes. While many of the taboos are now disappearing, what's still firmly in place is a strict feudal system, with the untouchables as serfs and the upper castes as landlords. The economic divide enforced by caste can be seen in any village. The untouchables remain landless, earning a bare subsistence working on the farms of the upper castes. अब अंतर में तो बहुत है बड़का जात में अब घर से गला उबजा के खाते हैं हम सब कमा के खाई तो अंतर ना है यार खाती है कि ना खाई है मौके मर्दे कमाते हैं तो खाते हैं अब सब के खेती है तो अपना कमा खा के घर में उबजा के बड़ी सेहत ले आते हैं तो अपना खाते रहते हैं The untouchables have seen little change since independence. Mahatma Gandhi dubbed them Harijans or children of God. But today they've rejected the term as patronising and prefer to be called Dalits or the oppressed. Many Dalits now accuse Gandhi of being part of the system that has oppressed them. Indeed, Gandhi's grandson and former politician Rajmahan Gandhi feels the caste divide in Indian society remains all too clear. Your grandfather is the father of modern India. Uh, he tried to do something for the untouchables, but many Dalites criticise him for not doing enough. Do you think that's the case? He did far more to make the higher castes ashamed of the wrongs of the caste system and of untouchability than he was able to do for the lower castes or for the Dalits. If the point is made that uh, the Dalits still, after his influence, are still suffering, I think that is a legitimate point. Does it suggest that those that have followed him haven't done enough? Yes, I think it does suggest that, undoubtedly. <laughs> The car system is still firmly entrenched in India, but the Dalites are fed up and determined not to simply accept their miserable fate. Here in Bihar, they form the Untouchables Army, the Dalit Sena, and are fighting back against centuries of oppression. I'm travelling with senior leaders of the Dalit Army. I don't know where we're headed. We're travelling into the countryside to visit one of their underground military training camps. The camp's location is a closely guarded secret. Our journey there with Dalit Sena leader Dr Sharma became a cloak and dagger affair with lookouts, special signals and endless waiting for the all clear. After a trek of several hours, we finally arrived to find that the Untouchables Army is no ordinary army. Bread, food, four poison. Ab, tum log ko goli load karne ka poison mein aana hai. Bread, food. 
It's the village women, many as young as 16, who receive the military training, simply because in the war between castes, they are the most at risk. अभी हाल फिलहाल हुआ गांव का नाम है वरुणा उसके साथ सात आठ लोगों ने बलात्कार किया सोलह लोगों ने उसका कपड़ा खींचा और कपड़ा खींच करके उसके भेजाइनल प्रपोर्शन से स्टिक के सहारे भीतर पेट में डाल दिया वो महिला चार महीने की प्रेग्नेंट थी वो महिला दम तोड़ दी The abuse of Dalit women is routine, a way for the upper castes to assert their superiority and maintain order on the caste ladder. उनके पास हथियार है, वो मजदूरी करने के नाम पर जबरन जब फोर्स करते हैं मजदूरी करो और नहीं करेंगे, तो उनके ऊपर आक्रमण होगा। उनके बहु बेटियों के साथ इज्जत आबरू के साथ खेलवार करेंगे। शादी विवाह में भी पहले परंपराएं चलती थीं कि शादी करके सबसे पहले बहू को ले जाना है जो नई दुल्हन होगी उसको ले जाना है लैंडलॉर्ड के घर में अपर कास्ट के लोगों के घर में ये परंपराएं चलती हैं। The women spend up to a fortnight here, sheltered and fed by nearby villagers, as they learn to use guns and make bombs. Their firing range doubles as pasture for the village goats and cattle. Dalit women like Baby Devi are being taught self-respect as well as how to kill. देखिए किसी के मन में दलितों के प्रति सम्मान नहीं है। सम्मान होता तो उनके ऊपर जुल्म और अन्याय नहीं होता। हाथ ये टाइट से पकड़ेगी, पूरा फुल टाइट से, इसको यहाँ रखेगी, इसको यहाँ रखेगी, जैसे पकड़ दी थी पहले, हाँ। दो, तीन। मैं अपना हिम्मत के लिए अपना इज्जत के लिए मैं हम हथियार उठाए हैं लांगे हुए कहीं पर घराया जाता है सिर्फ अपना इज्जत के लिए कि कोई मेरे पास आने नहीं सकता Does the gun make you feel safe? जी अपना अबरू को रचाम करेंगे खुद अपने Now that the Dalits are armed, they've grown bolder. In addition to the Dalit Senna, there are numerous gangs of Dalit bandits who defy the authorities by terrorising high caste villages. In many parts of Bihar, it's the upper castes who are now on the defensive. This upper caste village has been attacked by armed Dalits on three occasions. The resulting gunfights left several injured and one man dead. These Rajput or warrior caste villages are armed to the teeth and determined to prepare the next generation for the struggle ahead. Pretty Rena is only eight years old and not even strong enough to pull the trigger, let alone hold a shotgun without assistance. <laughs> Clearly on the back foot, this ragtag force is a response to the anarchy in the countryside. In much of Bihar, the rule of law is non-existent. The police are corrupt and hold no sway, and the castes emerge as powerful groupings to defend property, power and one's fellow caste members. 
You're even training the children here with guns. Why do they need to be trained? उग्रवादी बदमाशों से लड़ाई लड़ते रहे हैं अब वे पीढ़ी आने वाला है उसको ट्रेनिंग न दी जाएगी तो आर्म सब छीन ले जाएगा जान मार देगा Until recently the upper castes used their muscle to rule Bihar while over 80% of the population are lower caste, landlords often control the ballot box by force of arms. Those days are over. Dr Sharma, a former government minister, is on the warpath for democracy. He's encouraging the Dalits to fight back. In Bihar, as in many other states, India's lowly have made their influence felt in organised politics as never before. Certainly no political party can afford to ignore the lower castes by sheer virtue of their numbers. The state is run by Chief Minister Lalu Prasad Yadav, himself from a low caste, the Yadavs or cattle herders. Yadav's party has ruled Bihar for four turbulent years. All the while, Lalu has thumbed his nose at the higher castes. Because our whole command is the last few people, the minority, the Siddhulka, the Siddhul tribe, and the upper caste, the poor man, the poor man. All these people are united with us, because we have how important is it to have a, a low caste chief minister? Log tantra ki mahanta hai praja tantra ki ki ye vote or tab tumko adhikar mila hai to hum mukhmantri ban gaye is raj ka to tum bhi mukhmantri ban sakte ho. How has the change in the caste system changed politics in this country? Yes. Well, um, you have some states of India now that are ruled by parties, they are committed to rule by some castes. So the caste divisions of Indian society have become political uh, sort of fault lines, you might say, or political battle lines across India. And therefore parties are based on castes. That makes caste a very powerful political factor. For six weeks, a student-led revolt against the government's job quota plan has seen more than 40 people killed. As Indian politicians know only too well, gaining power is one thing. Actually doing something once you're in government is an entirely different matter. In 1990, former Prime Minister VP Singh promised to reserve 27% of all government jobs for the lower castes. The plan prompted an angry response from upper caste students. Events turned nasty when this student leader tried to burn himself to death in protest at the quotas. More than 150 others followed his example. Many died from their burns. Job reservation continues to be the most explosive issue in the struggle to reform the caste system. Last month, the government in Uttar Pradesh, next door to Bihar, sought to further increase the quotas. Riots broke out once again, and many demonstrators were killed by police. There was a, a strong feeling on the part of the higher castes that these reservations are unfair because there is a large percentage of poor people among the higher castes and uh, when uh, you're a poor person from a forward caste, higher caste, and your son or daughter does very well in exams but can't get a place in a school or a college, cannot have any prospect of getting a job, that leads to very deep resentment. In a poor country like India, 
Competition for jobs, wealth and education is inevitably fierce. There's always someone who misses out. In the past, the caste system ensured stability by making sure everyone knew their place. But now, after centuries of oppression, those at the bottom of the caste system are finally challenging those who benefit from it. The downtrodden are in the majority and using their newfound political muscle to demand change. The irony is that attempts to change the caste system have only succeeded in sharpening caste identity. This has in turn served to make the caste war even more intense. But Dr Sharma is convinced there's no alternative. Look, this is the country of the cancer. And in this country, this is the cancer of the country. The jati, badi vivastha, the brahman badi vivastha. This country is the need to be able to do this from the germ. Thank you.